I became interested in the big cat phenomenon in 1984. I got more than I bargained for when I was out badger watching um, in mid Dorset because I was watching badgers on a nice September evening and I saw a puma come along stalking one of the badger cubs and I couldn't believe it. I hadn't had any idea or an inkling that there were large cats living wild in the UK. But um, I saw this and I was very close and I had a torch on it and I saw a puma run away and leap a fence and I was ecstatic <coughs> and I thought, blimey, there's um, something really weird going on here. I didn't think too much of it though until um, later that year in 1984 when I saw the same puma again. It was a female and she had cubs in a quarry nearby and I watched them quite closely and that's what really triggered my interest to start investigating it a bit more. I would regularly come across evidence of mammal behaviour which was not typical for our native carnivores or omnivores and I knew it was possibly linked to what I had seen earlier. So then I looked into some of the reports and they were becoming more in the media as well. So that kindled my interest even more. It just crescendoed after that and I was constantly on a roll with people giving me information. I was asking for reports, there's media reports, there was all kinds of things going on. So that's when it really took off. People see a cat, they've often got a camera around the neck, but they're so spellbound at the time, they forget to use it because they're concerned with the moment of seeing the animal. So like many times we have people have a camera and could have taken photographs of those cats, but don't because the, the moment is so surreal and amazing. And so that's part of the problem. Um, but also there are loads of footage um, of, and there's photographs, there's film, there's all kinds of evidence of big cats out there taken by thousands of people all over the UK. People in the know would say these cats are elusive, they keep out of the way, they hide, which they do. But on the other hand, they can be so blatant, it's unbelievable. And I think that's a bit of a paradox because people see these animals close up, often taking no notice of them, just walking in front of them. And they can't believe that such a wild animal could be so indifferent. The truth is the animal was probably afraid of them but had to move past them otherwise it would be elusive and hide out mainly nocturnal although we get so many sightings in the day and I've seen several in the daytime myself but they are amazingly intelligent witty animals so they they know what they're doing they try to keep out of the way and in most cases most of the animals are never seen even in built-up areas such as in countries such as india and africa and malaysia where we have city leopards living amongst people and the people rarely see them because they know how to keep out of the way mainly nocturnal hide away keep a low profile and so basically that is what the animal behaves like but to have thousands of reports a year just shows really how many animals there are out there because most of the time they won't be seen, 80 or 90%. So even the 10 or 20% of the time they are seeing, they are seeing the tip of the iceberg of what animals are actually out there. When you look at our own wildlife in the UK, a third of it is non-native and we have hundreds of species, but people don't bat an eyelid at animals like American mink, seeker deer, American squirrels, Chinese deer, all these things that have escaped from private zoos and menageries. Yet when a big cat is seen, people seem to think, oh, that can't be right, that's impossible. This is because of the status that big cats have. People see big cats as larger than life animals that can't really exist anywhere but in their natural countries of origin. Of course, this is very untrue. People have kept big cats for hundreds of years and especially after Victorian times, pumas and leopards, which were the two most easily obtainable species, were kept in captivity. Come the 1950s and 60s, this was a commonplace thing. It was, it was a thing to do, was to get a tiger or a lion or a leopard or a cheetah. And if you had that money, you could go into Harrods in London and buy a lion and a tiger. There was no rules and regulations regarding non-native animals or dangerous wild animals. So people started to collect them. Places that weren't adequate enough to hold these very strong, intelligent animals. So many of them escaped. And since the 1960s, we've had breeding populations of puma and perhaps the 1970s for leopards in the UK. 
all because of that. That's the main reason why these animals are here. And once those animals get out, you only need a small core of breeding population. And before long, those animals will meet each other. You will have large areas of the country that, that are, are being naturalized by these animals. And that's happened decades ago. Now we have so many of these animals, it's almost to their natural um, context you would expect in a different country. We have hundreds of leopards and pumas in the UK living natural lives, just like it would be in India, Africa, America. Even if there wasn't the Dangerous Wild Animals Act that came in in 1976, we still had pumas breeding here. We've got evidence from the 1960s that pumas were breeding in the southwest of England. So that's way before the act came in. So I think that um, made it worse, the act. But certainly if it didn't even happen, we would still be inundated with leopards and pumas in the UK because people were still keeping them. The big cat phenomenon, as I call it, will soon not be a phenomenon because since the 1960s it's escalated there have been more and more people reporting there have been more and more farmers with livestock taken there have been the most amazing compelling footage and photos and there are more sightings per year so in, in the past there might have been like a thousand reports come across the whole of the uk 10 years later we had 2,000 plus reports now we probably have nearly 3,000 reports so it's escalating to such an extent that it's being ingrained into people's minds as a reality and i think in the next decade or 20 years the subject will not be able to be hidden because there will be so much demand for the truth there'll be demand for freedom of information there will be a, a demand on the governments to tell the truth about what's going on at that point, something becomes, it becomes different. There has to be a changeover because people will not take all the bureaucracy for much longer, the hiding, the, you know, the foiled reports and everything like that. It's got to become mainstream and become real. And it will take time, but it, it, it cannot be like hidden for much longer it's too big now it's, it's too big because loads of people now believe in big cats even if they you know, even if they don't know much about the subject there are more people who believe in the evidence of big cats living wild in the uk than people who think it's all a load of myth over the years we hear many reports of of a cover-up and that is instances of animals being killed on roads the police have been informed and then white vans suddenly appear with a lot of people in overalls, big bags come out, animals hidden away, van goes away, people are told to think it's a dog. And this is what happens on a regular basis. And we've had so many reports of roadkill, leopards and pumas being taken by the authorities. And then the authorities tell the people to cover it up or they say it was a dog don't ever say it was a cat we have that on record so many times so we know there's a conspiracy to hide the truth and it's been like that for decades and that actually does not help you know it helps a conspiracy but it doesn't help tell the real truth to the public of what's going on the government will be motivated to cover it up because it's a big it's a big thing big predatory animals that have the potential to be dangerous, that even have the potential to be man-killers at loose in the British countryside, um, with people who are not used to these kinds of wild animals, would cause havoc. So we know that people are really uneducated regarding big cats and their potential, if there is any potential to harm people or animals and stuff like that. So we know people would more likely panic if they believe there was a big cat out there that's because people assume big cats eat people they don't of course they eat deer and other animals and there's only a slight possibility of a big cat ever eating a person you know um it doesn't it doesn't happen when people are misinformed they will panic and we've already had panic many times because we've had big cats patrolling around school playgrounds for example where the teachers have all seen them the heads have seen them they've been seen by everybody and the children and the authorities and the police say get the kids indoors just be quiet and the cat will go away um, but still people are terrified and there's also people will be pointing fingers at the government 
and asking questions, asking how did you allow this to happen? How could we have these non-native animals living in the UK doing what they do with the potential of damage to people and livestock? And the government will have to answer that. There's all the farmers who have many livestock taken by big cats who will be needing to claim compensation. There will be people trying to do health and safety reports it's going to be, it will be so problematic if the government announced that there were leopards and pumas living wild in the UK because so many people will want them eliminated. There will be problems all around uh, for many different reasons. So one can understand why they try to keep it behind closed doors, but there will be a time when they cannot do it any longer.